about Izzy Engel. You will see her sooner rather than later coming off the bench, the number two scorer in the country. Notre Dame wearing their blue jerseys with gold numbers on the road here at Boston College. The Eagles in white. Notre Dame winners of their last six since they lost their season opener to Michigan State. And in that six game win streak, they have outscored their opponents 22 to nothing. Really starting to find their group, but we'll see if that carries on into conference play. Notre Dame, one of the preseason favorites. Pick third in the ACC preseason poll. Currently ranked number 13. They are the first ranked opponent that this 7-1 Boston College team has faced this season. Abby Jemma will play it back to the goalkeeper five freshmen in this starting lineup for Nate Norman's Fighting Irish. Gemma, one of those. And on the other side, get a chance to show you Chris Watkins in his first year running this Boston College program. Comes over after seven seasons as the head coach at Gonzaga. Also spent 20 years as an assistant at BYU. And here come the Irish into the attack. Ball laid across. Paige Buckner getting the start up top along with Randy Four. And now Boston College, a chance in transition. This, Lori, is where this Eagle team likes to strike. They win it. They want to get it the other way quickly. One of the nation's leading teams in terms of earning, earning corner kicks, as they do here. Nate Norman feeling really confident about his team this year. Coming off a season a year ago, they finished second in the ACC. Only loss coming at number one, Florida State. First corner of the match, Aislinn Streisick. Well, she scored directly off a corner already this season. That was a Sports Center top 10. This time she looks to set it up for her teammate. It was Grace Quarter, the transfer from Gonzaga. Your one Speaking of which, this is worth taking another look at, don't you think, Lori? Yeah, it certainly is. And directly off of a corner, Boston College, and we already see they got the first corner of this game, and a lot of that has to do with their direct style of play. What a beauty that was. Just floated in with the bend into that top corner. But a lot of their ability to earn set pieces, corners in particular, come from their direct play under Chris Watkins. Still says they have a lot to work on, a lot to improve, but it's been a wonderful start to the season. They're playing with confidence. They know tonight against Notre Dame, who also has a direct style, high energy type of play that they're gonna have to be good defensively, pick their moments when they're gonna high press, when they're gonna sit back and just make it a little bit more difficult for Notre Dame to find numbers in behind. Morgan Roy, one of the wing backs in this formation for Notre Dame. Two different formations, 4-3-3 four, three, three for Boston College, 3-5-2 for Notre Dame. Those wing backs so active. Al's on the far side for Notre Dame. They are offside as our referee. We hear the whistle from Luis Reese for the first time. When this Notre team, Dame team does have the ability to go quickly, but it'll be Matriano in the midfield, number 13, the one that's really gonna be dictating the play for Notre Dame on when is it on to go quickly, when is it on just to slow down, keep possession, make this Boston College team have to work side to side and defend more often than they would really like to in this game. Senior goalkeeper, Abibka Villabrant. One of the captains on this Boston College team taking the free kick. Good numbers around the ball for the Irish. A leading ball up forward for Randy Four, one of the five freshmen in this starting 11 for a young but exciting Notre Dame team. Charlie Codd, number nine, picks it up, back out to the left, on the ground in front of the goal, a chance. Still alive. Roy keeping it in play for the Irish. Long ball over the top, a chance in the box, and Bill Brandt ends that opportunity.
You can see how quickly at times in this match, Lori, Boston College will look to get the ball up to their front line. Oh, and I like that direct play because they do know that there is coverage for Notre Dame with the three center backs that they play and they like to get numbers forward. So there is an opportunity at times when Villebrandt had collected that ball just to go directly, look to see if they can find, find their front three. Those front three for Boston College currently have combined for nine of their 20 goals. So they have the ability to be able to get in behind, cause problems, but they have to pick their moments because right now we're seeing them keep possession. It's gonna be important for them as well to make sure that they don't just try to go long every time and give away possession and leave themselves exposed defensively. Buckner had it for a moment. Back to Roy. Abby Mills quickly up to four on the front line for the Irish Pals. Another ball on the ground. And then just a little too much physicality and pressure from the Irish. They commit the foul, Boston College We'll take it over with the free kick. But it's really good works from Ella Richards, number 22 for Boston College, just to hold up play because all immediately, all of a sudden you see three players from Notre Dame swarming her. She keeps possession, draws the foul. Now they can slow the tempo down because this is a Notre Dame team and in general in the ACC play, it is gonna be a higher tempo. Pressure's gonna come that much more quickly. The finding moments when you can take just a little bit of breath, take the sting out of the game, play the tempo that you want to, be so important for both of these sides. Sonoma Kasica, the freshman goalkeeper for the Irish, they've been back and forth playing a couple of different goalkeepers. Atley Olofsson, sophomore, it's been very good and well, started four games. This is the fourth start for Kasica. And Nate Norman telling us, look, we've just got a couple of really good goalkeepers. We'll see if either one can create some separation now as they get into conference play. I think all around they just have a lot of depth. Yeah, they well do. Right here. <laughs> you got two elite freshmen that don't start the games, that come off the bench, help keep the tempo high when they need them. I think one of the things that we're seeing from Notre Dame, even though there's been some good ball across, that's four again. Even though we are seeing some giveaways and back and forth play. Oh, a chance for Boston College. This is Sydney Sagala. She can flat out fly. Notre Dame well aware of it. Gets the cross to the other side. What a sliding effort defensively. Taking away any chance there for Streisick. Well, I really thought Kasika could come off her line and maybe try to grab that. Instead, decides to stay on her line in goal. But Sagala does such a good job. Just gets her head up, sees the space that she has. Just floats it into a dangerous area. But it's that sliding tackle just at the last second for Matriano. That's your holding midfielder for Notre Dame. Getting back, making the play, just throwing off Boston College in the end. Great work defensively, but we're seeing both teams be able to exploit in transition, quick attacks immediately when they go a bit more direct. Well, we knew it would happen early, Lori, and here it is. Three subs, it looks like, coming on for Notre Dame, including the number two goal scorer in the country, Izzy Engel. And don't forget about Lily Joseph there, number 27. Three goals, three assists for another talented freshman for Notre Dame. Nate Norman said he had the conversation with those two. He said, look, you're going to play a lot of minutes. And they are. They play starter minutes. But he just kind of liked the idea of let's give some other people a little buy-in, an opportunity to really fly at teams, put them under pressure to start the match, and then you can come in and make a difference. And they have. Another chance in transition for the Eagles. Sagala on it in the box. Blocked away.
So Notre Dame defense really having to work. Ellie Osbeck, by the way, was the other sub who came on in that trio. Seasoned Notre Dame player in her fifth year with the Irish grad student. She came in on the far side here is Engel. First chance to get a look at one of the best scorers in the country. She unleashes with her left foot three defenders around her. The uh, point I was trying to make a few minutes ago and it was back and forth is that one of the things that we're seeing from Notre Dame is that they do have a variety of ways that they can attack, whether it's going straight up the middle, little combination as we just see right there. Yeah, Grace Restovich, Lori number 24, so good at creating in that attack for Notre Dame. Yeah, and Cod, one of the midfielders, trying to get on the end of that ball. But then also in the wide areas, they can cause issues as well. Now Sagala causing issues for Boston College in a good way, and Notre Dame trying to keep up. There is Sagala again, stuck in the corner. And when you talk about a player who has speed, well, she's a two-sport athlete, Sydney Sagala, at Boston College. She's also a member of the track team who has some championships to her name, 200 and 400. That's what's coming at you <laughs> when she goes flying with the ball. I, I love her style of play, and we're already seeing in these first op 10 opening minutes of this game is her ability to stretch the team. She's always keeping the back line of the opposition honest. Corner curled in. And she's opening up this game. And one of the things for Boston College, we, we've talked about the variety of ways that Notre Dame can attack, but they do leave themselves exposed sometimes in those central areas. Boston College right now doing a good job of picking up the ball. Then it's the run from Sagala that's initiating that ball being played in behind, earning a couple corner kicks already for Boston College in these opening minutes. And just an excellent start from this young team, Boston College, that knew they were gonna have to put in a, a really good shift tonight in order to stall this attack for Notre Dame. It's like a second season beginning when you get into conference play. Look at the speed of Joseph with the ball at her feet. There is so much that you have to deal with if you're a defense as Engel follows it all the way in to Villebrandt. Angle, 10 goals, one assists, and you pick the number. She's right up there in the ACC top three and just about everything offensively. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that goes for the country as well. I love the tagline. Izzy's been busy, yeah, no she doubt. Has. <laughs> and we said it coming into the game, Jen, and, and Nate Norman reiterated it to us was, this is a player as a freshman that has had a lot of confidence. And yes, some of that has to do is that she comes off the bench 15 minutes into the game, and they knew that that's when it's back and forth, then it settles down, it's allowed them to transition into the college game, but her ability to take on 1v1, she has the confidence that every time she's on the ball, she feels like she can score exactly what you want from one of your attackers. Set piece for the Eagles. We'll go wanting. Our next ACC Network women's volleyball match should be a great one between Keystone State rivals. Number one, Pitt, hosting number three, Penn State at the Peterson Event Center. A sellout crowd of 12,000 plus expected. Coverage begins Wednesday, September 18th at 7 Eastern. Good touch. Joseph going to work and then is fouled. No, the referee putting his arms out. I can't believe that's not a foul. It should maybe be a card, to be honest. Well, I immediately waved in here. I thought it would at least be a yellow card, but this is a great little combination play. Engel, Joseph. It's a layoff from Engel, then allows for Joseph. Yeah. That, that is a foul. If you're, even if you're not gonna give a card, that is absolutely a foul. Joseph sees the space in behind. Great long touch to be able to try to get herself into it and then just stalled. Well, Joseph, undaunted, going back to work. And we said Villebrandt would be busy. 
Well, the Notre Dame sideline and Nate Norman is hot over here because they believe that should have been at least a foul. Makes well, it pretty clear right there. Yeah, and he's exactly right because there was no intention to play the ball and it was an excellent touch from Joseph. Those two already combining, causing problems for the back line. And, and honestly, that's what you have to do is just bring them down and, and take the foul. Boston College looking to attack on the other end now is Streisick. And the whistle eventually is blown. But I think the thing that Nate Norman is arguing is, yes, yeah, so this is going to be a physical game. It's going to be a high-paced game. So just make sure as a referee, Reese, that you get control of this game from the opening whistle. Just listening in because this is happening just below us here. So the referee coming over to explain to Nate Norman why he did not make a call on that play. He actually gave a yellow card to one of the assistants on the Irish bench. So I think that's who it went to, assistant coach Martin Rennie picking up the yellow. Now what's conference play without a little controversy? <laughs> Welcome everyone. <laughs> we love this time of year. It's Boston College team holding their own thus far and the Eagles looking to prove something this year. Fresh start, a team that's done very well in the non-conference, seven and one record, but this their first ranked opponent of the season. Chris Watkins coming in, talking about a defined style of play. And part of that is bolstering that offense. You can see the numbers support that so far. Now, it is early. Nobody is fooling themselves. And every time we talk to Chris Watkins, he'll say, we still have so much work to do. He is not resting on his laurels at all. Well, absolutely. And it is a journey for this young team. But it's also about the controllables. They knew coming in that it was going to be about fighting uh, about winning the first and second balls, covering ground, tackling, and first two, any loose balls. And, and so far, it, it's been an excellent game plan for them, creating these turnovers right here, yeah. tackling when necessary. Ella Richards, one of the most important attacking players, Coach Watkins telling us for this Boston College team, unable to take advantage in that instance of the turnover. Richards, a senior, two goals, two assists on the season. Foul called as both players going up for the ball right near midfield. Gemma, bouncing ball. Now this Notre Dame team in particular, missing some key players. Boston College also a goalkeeper at the U20 World Cup, but for Notre Dame, two Canadian players and one player on the US team for the U20s. And Annabelle Chukwu, let me tell you what, I mean, when you get to say you broke Christine Sinclair's scoring record at any level, that's pretty impressive as Christine Sinclair, the all-time international leading goal scorer. Obviously, that's not the record that's been broken, but this young player who will be joining Notre Dame when that tournament is over, she already has a goal in just two appearances before she left. She broke Sinclair's record for most goals for Canadian youth soccer. So as good as this Notre Dame attack has been, it's going to get better. It <laughs> goes back to our, our comment about Bears of the riches in terms of depth of the squad. Engel doesn't need much of an opening to shoot. And knows where that goal is at all times. A little quick touch and then be able to get her hips turned around to keep that on frame. Excellent work from the freshman, Engel. I'd be curious to see your first time seeing her in person here, Lori. What winds up really impressing you about this player? Because yeah, watching her on film, it is just, she just eats up the ball and goes after it. Well, right now, it, it's more about the combination as Sigala is going to pick this ball up. And Sigala had a chance there, but puts it over the crossbar. 
But one of the things about Ingle and Joseph is, is more so not just individually, because yes, they have that in spades, but it's really about their combination play, complementing one another early on in their careers here at Notre Dame, playing off of one another. Uh, no foul that was called on top of the box from Joseph is a prime example of that. Just a quick little one-two, then you have players chasing defensively against them. That combination continues to develop and continues to evolve throughout the season. It be so difficult to defend. Conference play getting underway across the ACC tonight in women's soccer. Boston College picked 14th of the 17 teams now in the ACC preseason poll. It was just interesting, Jen, because we're hearing everything since we're right on top of the Notre Dame bench. So when they're not happy with a call or <laughs> they want things to look a little bit different on the field, we're hearing it loud and clear. And that last little play of Cod in the midfield for Notre Dame played it back. They wanted her to turn play forward because of these moments right here. They feel like if they get their strikers on the ball more often, it can cause that back line for Boston College a lot of problems. But it's about picking and choosing because right now, Charlie Codd, Restovich in the midfield, even Matriano, probably more so than the other two, Matriano, finding moments just to slow it down. Just keep possession. See if you can force Boston College to have to move side to side because that's when the space is gonna open up and you're gonna find Joseph in these pockets right here. Matriano getting it up to Joseph. Roy going to work one-on-one. -on -one. Good defending there. Sarai Costello wearing that number 19 patch in honor of Wells Crowther. Making the big play. Snuffing out that opportunity for Morgan Roy, who we certainly have seen before, a member of the all-freshman team last year, Roy, for the Irish. Roy bumped down this time by Streisick. Notre Dame has been dominant in the series between these two programs, a record of 16-1-1. One one. They've won five in a row. Their only loss coming in 2003 in the Big East Tournament. Does that change this year? Osbeck. You can, you can see the game plan and the desire of the Irish, Lori, a lot of times they find those wing backs out wide. They look for the cross in. Haven't really been too terribly dangerous yet. And then Boston College knows they can be dangerous when they get number nine, Sagala, on the run. Richards. Really composed on the ball. One of the things Coach Watkins loves about her, Georgie Clark. No more for her defensive work up there helping the attack, number seven in white. Well, that entire play started for Boston College because it was a turnover for Notre Dame through Matriano. And that's the prime example of how Notre Dame at times could just slow it down. Move it to the wide areas. You have dangerous players and pals when she's out there. Roy, who's ever on the field, you have speed in those wide areas. So move it side to side. Look to see if you can get players taking on 1v1, but once it's a turnover, that's the first thing that Boston College is looking for, to get those three front runners in behind, match up 3v3. Just happens, uh, it was snuffed out defensively by an important touch inside the 18-yard box for Notre Dame. I'm gonna give you a look at our week three ACC Network football lineup. It begins Saturday at noon Eastern with NC State hosting Louisiana Tech. Then at number 10, Miami hosting Ball State, and we'll cap the night with Maryland and Virginia at eight. You can find live sports with Where to Watch only on the ESPN app and ESPN.com, the ultimate viewing guide to live sports. Lori, I know if there was a break in your soccer schedule, you'd probably be trying to tune in, see those Cavaliers, <laughs> see how they're doing on the football field, your alma mater. Which football, Jen? I know, I know. <laughs> that's, that's never a question really for you though, is it? <laughs> we know which football has your love. Jen Hildreth, two-time ACC Player of the Year, Lori Lindsay, the Virginia Cavalier legend in her time on the call on this Thursday night. 
from the Newton campus of Boston College for this ACC opener for the Eagles and the Irish. Amelie Dre, one of the freshmen starting at center back, started every match this season for Boston College, number 12 in the back. You wonder, Lori, if we'll start to see a lot more turnover, big freshman classes like we see at Notre Dame, a, a program record 13 freshmen joining the Irish this season, just with some of the changes to women's soccer in this country in general now. No WSL draft anymore with the new collective bargaining agreement that was just signed and an avenue for younger players to go pro if that's what they choose. Yeah, I absolutely think we're going to see the the course and, and the, just the the whole uh, of women's soccer evolve and, and change. And everyone's just going to have to, I think, stay calm initially because sometimes I think when change happens, it, it feels like, okay, you have to get everything right at once. And I think we're just going to have to ride the waves in terms of the evolution and what that looks like. Some players might choose not to go to college. Some might play a couple years. It, some might play all four years and being open to all of that because everybody's journey is different. What we do know, though, is college soccer is such an important pathway. Whether you want to go pro or not, it's about getting a great education, playing college soccer, how important it has been to so many lives, mine included. And goal after it, and <laughs> it's a dead stop there, but Villebrandt comes away with the ball. And here we're going to see Engel get involved immediately, always looking to stretch in behind, create that little bit of space for her, dealt with really well. And then Villebrandt at the right time comes out, keeps a hold of it, makes the play. But we're seeing freshmen, we're seeing all of these different players. It just goes back to the point is, listen, there's so many avenues. What an exciting time for all. And we had a wonderful discussion with Nate Norman leading into it and what everything will look like. And time will tell, right? And it will change and, and it's going to be fun. But what talent we have here tonight. Always plenty of talent to watch in the ACC. Notre Dame, one of six ranked teams in the conference at the moment. And of course, that includes one, two, and three. Stanford holding down that top spot. Virginia, Florida State. Duke, North Carolina, who we got to see last week facing off. Rustovich, able to keep possession, but now puts it right to the feet of Boston College. There's Matriano, number 13 in the middle, really important metronome type of player that Nate Norman said they've looked at the numbers over the years and his team is better when they play through Matriano. And she's going to have an important role. And obviously to what you just said with Nate Norman, she always has an important role. But in particular, because the thing that we're seeing is a lot of back and forth for both of these teams. Similar styles, yes, different formations, but similar styles that they want to have high energy. They want to get to goal quickly and they have the attackers that prove why they want to do that because they have goal scorers, they have electric players that can get in behind and cause problems. Roy with their left foot forces the save. Best opportunity of the night thus far for the Irish. But it's the patience from Notre Dame in this play, and that's what I was getting to, is for Notre Dame, Matriano, finding just moments where you can be patient because Boston College, their first line of pressure has been excellent tonight. But if you bypass that, then you're going to find space. Roy does here, goes herself, direct with her decision-making, left-footed shot, forces the set piece, corner kick, and, and that's much better from Notre Dame. If they can bypass that first line of pressure, space is going to open up more options for them to be able to take shots to combine even more. First corner of the night for Notre Dame, bending toward the goal, batted down but not away. Joseph with the follow. Still a live shot is blocked out of the goal. <laughs> As it was Abby Gemma, the freshman defender, who earns another corner for her team. Oh yeah, great work defensively. This goes back to the controls controllables that we are talking about from Coach Watkins. Look at the amount of numbers. Villabrand does whatever to parry that away. But then so much traffic, so many Boston College players doing whatever they can to put their bodies in front, make it predictable for themselves defensively. Now Villabrand will 
heave at least a temporary sigh of relief after that threat is over from the back-to-back -back corner kicks. She's credited with four saves already in this first half. Ospek unable to turn the corner on the far side. The Irish out shooting Boston College so far. But still 0-0 and a trio of subs coming for the Eagles. Ava Long, a grad transfer from Harvard. Sophia Lowenberg, number 25, junior in the midfield. And Paige Peltier, a transfer from none other than Notre Dame, grad transfer. Now facing her former team, that's number 24. You'll notice her target player up top for the Eagles, who's had a productive year off the bench, four goals, two assists. Great ball from Charlie Codd. Yeah, but right into the path of Ospek on the far side. Now back in the center it goes. Joseph, well marked. Ospek putting in the work to win it back. Codd, quick look over the shoulder. She wants to return pass. It's left just a little short by Joseph. Matriano. Ospek has it taken right off her foot and cleanly. Boston College saying, let's go. Zagala doesn't need to be told that twice. <laughs> so smooth. Who needs starting blocks? <laughs> well, that's where, that's where Notre Dame, though, has done a good job, is that they've had the three back, so even if it's just Zagala, She's still making them work, but they always have the pressure of the coverage and they're able to go. It's just about the decision-making now in the final third. Ospek has it on her foot again. Joseph, a little behind her, Cod. Too high. And since Ospek has come on, She's created some space for herself, drawing the two defenders, looking for the little window. I love this position right here from Kaj, just stays out of it. But just at the last second, instead of just making sure she calms herself down, strikes through it, keeps it on frame, keeps her body over it, leaning back, trying to go too aggressively, sends that well over the crossbar. Those are the little details I'd imagine, Nate Norman. That will be the conversation, is how do we clean that up? The last little details of our decision-making can be better. Angle, such a handful when she gets the ball or she's running onto the ball. And then on the other end, Sagala, the biggest thorn in the side of the Irish thus far. Does she have support with her though? Had a pretty good option there in Peltier. Yeah, I thought Sagala could have played that a split second longer, got her head up, saw Peltier and then held on to it, cut down the angle and then Peltier already in closer to the six yard box the ball is played behind her so just a lost opportunity even though not a ton of possession for boston college doing a good job defensively and then they're then they're doing a good job of immediately looking up causing problems even if they don't have a ton of numbers goldthwaite back up to the front line a little space being given here for long the grad transfer from harvard that goes in Boston College takes the lead. Ava Lung doing the honors. Her oh, first goal in a Boston College uniform. Yeah, it is an exit goal, wasn't it, from distance? And you felt this because we were just making the comment, Jen, and making the point that even though they haven't had a ton of possession, they're still causing problems for the defense of Notre Dame because they're picking out the right options. Sagala stretching the line, that's opening up the space underneath, and then it's long, the substitute that's come on. 
later in this second half, just cuts it to her preferred right foot, and then what a strike that is, just tucks it underneath. The goalpost comes off of Kasika into the back of the net. A wonderful strike from distance. You wonder if that could, should be changed to an own goal. It did bounce off of Kasika and eventually over the line, but nonetheless, Boston College takes the lead and when scoring first, they've been perfect. 7-0, they just have one loss on the season thus far. The biggest thing that we have been talking about too is for Boston College is their confidence. Because they've been more direct this year, it's putting them in these positions to be able to score goals and then they're taking those chances and that's not any different. You've got that front line making that back line for Notre Dame so aware. You're forcing defenders. There's Sakala again. And Long, that combination is two for two! This Eagle attack has come to play tonight! Goals a minute apart, breaking this game open, giving Boston College a 2-0 lead over the 13th ranked Irish. Well, this is when you want to take your chances immediately after scoring, continue to punish. Sagal at the heart of it again. Look, she's attracting three players. And then what a first time touch that is to find the back of the net. Sagala with a perfectly weighted pass. There's the pressure, knows that she can't get a shot off, but it's right into the path of Lung. She's able to take it first time because of the pace that's on it. Doesn't force her to take another touch. Almost catches Kasika going one way, shots near post. 2-0 just like that for Boston College. And talk about confidence. The yeah. point we are just making, being direct, finding Sagala, and then you get the runners coming off of that. You know, Chris Watkins talked to us about really wishing his players sometimes were more confident in themselves, believed in themselves a little bit more. He said, that's part of my job is just telling them that and getting them to believe it. Well, as you just said, nothing helps you believe like getting some results on the field. And they've certainly gotten them here in this first half. And um, consider it's a Notre Dame team that hasn't conceded a goal in their last six games. Yeah, they have been excellent. And, and the difference is, is we've seen Notre Dame have their chances, but the amount of players for Boston College, again, we're going to say this the entire game, but the controllables. Are you getting back, doing your defensive work, winning your individual battle? I think the thing that's let Notre Dame down in this first half is just that patience. Finding that extra pass, maybe that extra touch, and playing right into the aggressive nature of Boston College, and then Boston College is going to look to, to stretch them as much as possible. Getting Sagala, whether she's out wide right, down the middle of the field, then you're getting the fresh legs coming in as substitutes playing off of her. Excellent game plan, but everybody's bought in to get into conference play, Jen. And we've known this and we've seen this too. It's a completely different ball game. So you have to be ready for the physicality and the fight as well. Coming back the other way, Notre Dame looking to pull one back, getting to the end line. Now squeaking it toward the near post. That's Ellie Hodson, the freshman who just came into the match for the Irish. Missed all of last season and with an ACL injury, but had a goal in her debut, which was just the last game for the Irish against Marquette. Chase Ying also coming into the match, replacing Restovich in the midfield for Notre Dame. And a big test right now and challenge for Notre Dame to get themselves back into this. If they can sneak one back, Ten minutes left to go in this first half. They can sneak one back, cut this in half. That's a dangerous ball. Yep. Open goal now, a yep. chance, and there's one more. You just said, can Notre Dame pull one back? Hodson makes it two goals in two matches, and now a little confidence on the other side. Oh, a huge response from Notre Dame because immediately they're still trying to push the pace, look to see if they can get in behind, and it just drawn mistakes. This time, a little bit of miscommunication. There's the, the turnover. And they're trying to play out of the back and then you got Hod Hudson, Hodson, excuse me, the fresh legs, just realizing that there's a little bit of a miscommunication, gets on the wrong side of the defender, sneaks away. 
There's Villabrant coming off her line, big touch, and then that's a tight angle. So there's still work to be done from Hodson. Takes it so well, composes herself. Huge goal, cut one, cut one back for Notre Dame on the road. And now they can build in, but they've got to be smarter with their play. Just settle themselves down a bit. See if they connect a few more passes, especially in this midfield area. Andy Barth, number 21 out there for Boston College. Well, this is the smallest little detail, but if Ingle can get on the half turn there, she put herself in a really good position. And what I mean by that is instead of having to take a touch back, can she open up her body? That bypasses that first line of pressure from Boston College. And then she's off and running in a really dangerous area right in front of the back two center backs. Ospec so confident going 1v1. Finds caught in some space. Joseph, well defended. Three defenders converge around her for Boston College. But that's my point right there. Ospak drawing attention in those wide areas. But you see how committed Boston College is. They're getting numbers inside the 18-yard 18 18 box, especially centrally. So as soon as that ball is cut back on top of the 18-yard box, if it's not quick enough, they're going to come at you with pressure. So then that ball has to go either go back out to Ospec or come out to this near side. Keep moving it around. That opportunity has led to a few other opportunities for Boston College to be able to break out in a transitional moment. Notre Dame able to put one on the scoreboard after giving up two goals in less than a minute, 59 seconds between the two for Boston College in the 34th and 35th, 37th. Irish taking advantage of a misplayed pass in the back. That player right there, Hodson scoring one of her own. Gonna have to create something here and Boston College having none of it. Natalie Gross, freshman out of San Francisco, coming in to help the defensive effort and Goldthwaite. They're defending. There's a really good pressure initially. Something that's helped Boston College this first half, doing the defensive work, forcing the mistakes, turnovers from Notre Dame. Open Irish at the other side. That very well could have been the equalizer. Far too easy in the box for Notre Dame. Well, I think Notre Dame can't believe they're locked because wide open on that far post, just so easy. And then it's Mills with what looked like it was going to be an easy tap in. Unfortunately, when she makes connection, just sends it right into the hands of Villebrandt, right place at the right time. Almost a gift, though, from Boston College to tie this game for Notre Dame. But they should be building with confidence in those moments because it's off a set piece, put themselves in a good position to draw the foul. Matriano with that ball in, off the set, set piece, direct ball. Defensively, details lacking on that last play from Boston College. A whistle is blown. This won't count. Villebrandt up to the task anyway. Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern, the ACC Huddle Crew will get you ready for the day in Charlottesville with a 60-minute pregame show leading into NC State. 
hosting Louisiana Tech at noon. They'll have halftime pre and post game shows throughout the day. Then they'll come back at 6.30 to wrap up the afternoon. Get you set for Maryland, Virginia at 8. And of course, they'll be back after the game as well. It's a long game day for the huddle crew on ACCM. They've got you covered all day long. Laura, are you surprised at all by what we've seen tonight? No, I love conference play. I'm telling <laughs> you, it is such a different level of energy attacking wise. And I think, especially in the ACC, one of the things that we've seen evolve over the last few years, especially is this more kind of electric style. Typically, we've known the ACC as being a bit more of a possession style. We've got Notre Dame now playing direct, Boston College as well. It's making it fun because you have these varieties and it's forcing teams to have to, in real time, figure out how to combat that. We're seeing that now and who's taken and executing their chances has been the difference so far in this game because it has been back and forth. But you could make the argument that Notre Dame has had the better of the chances, just hasn't taken them. Allowed Boston College to stay in it. They fought, they've worked hard defensively in this first half and then two great goals in quick succession gave them the lead. Third corner kip. Coming up for Boston College, Sophia Lowenberg, Jr. out of Trumbull, Connecticut to take it. Looking far post. Angle, making it difficult on the Eagles who do well to keep possession, get it back up to their attacking players. Peltier, the former Notre Dame player for four years, both of her parents, Notre Dame athletes and alums. Gonna be a rather odd feeling for her, this matchup. Coming up in our halftime report, you can see we'll chat with both coaches. You don't wanna miss the one-on-one -on -one challenge. Got Lori really excited. I think she wants to do the one-on-one -on -one challenge. So you're just gonna have to I'm going stick down, around. So I'm telling you, I'm going down. Jen. But now she's trash talking. Air. Good luck. Thank you. I'll take it. Fourth quarter kick for Boston College now. Under a minute to play in a first half that got awfully exciting over the last 10 minutes or so. Do we have more before that halftime whistle blows? Costello, looking for Peltier. Ball put back into the box, swing into the other side, back in front of the goal. A lovely setup for Boston College. And number 11, Ava Long, playing with the brace so far. She had two goals, her first two in a Boston College uniform less than a minute apart, and that gives us the Boston College 2-1 lead. Notre Dame able to get one back, but the Eagles out in front at the half. Engel with her 10 goals, second in the nation. Joseph, three goals, three assists. Freshman, big part of what this Irish team is all about. Second half underway. And since I forgot to do it at the beginning, let's remind you to love the game tonight with us from Boston College. ACC play getting started across the league tonight. And the Eagles on the front foot to start half number two. Well, and Richard's done such a good job tonight from that right-hand side, cutting in at the right moment. Time's just creating overloads and it's been difficult for Notre Dame to deal with. She's gotten a few shots off that one, nowhere near the goal. But still a direct play right off the whistle. Kickoff from Boston College. As we mentioned, a lot of conference games, obviously still some teams playing out of conference. Number eight, Duke looking good. Four nothing, they lead it over Missouri. There's a shot and it doesn't miss by much. Morgan Roy taking matters into her own hands for Notre Dame. Well, we saw her on the, the right side throughout that first half and this time on the left-hand side, 
Playing in this left back position almost, or, or a winger, she'll be able to have the ability to, to get forward on this left-hand side, but also let her cut in to her right, to be able to take shots like that. Didn't miss by much. Look at well. Second ring, Virginia. Losses on the season so far, all tied up 1-1 with Miami. Sarai Costello, a special patch in honor of Wells Crowther tonight, the former BC lacrosse player who lost his life on 9-11. Such a revered story and spirit. Boston College, every one of the sports teams now has a game, a red bandana game where they honor Wells. And that game is tonight for this BC women's team. Seen a lot of red bandanas in the stands and a team playing inspired. There's Costello selected to wear that number 19 patch. And Chris Watkins just couldn't say enough good things about her. He said, she's tiny out there, but she's willing to go into any fight. She goes up against bigger competitors all the time, gets knocked back down, gets right back up. And it certainly is an honor as she talked about it, being able to wear that number 19 patch. Handball there. Our referee, Lewis Reese, makes clear. Notre Dame so accustomed to success, especially over the last few years. In the ACC, they've been right up there with Florida State in terms of victories. Haven't had the conference titles to show for it. They've often fallen at the feet of Florida State. Some of the bigger moments lost. The ACC tournament last year in the semifinal to Clemson. But high expectations as always for this Irish program. And Boston College perhaps making some believers out of well, themselves, their, ho their coach, Chris Watkins, hopes with the way they've started this match in ACC play tonight. Certainly Angle, that player right there, and Joseph. These two can really make things happen on the offensive end. Grace Quarter, the transfer from Gonzaga, defending. Long ball right up the middle. You can find Angle, why not? She'll have to do a little better than that. Easy in the end for Villebrandt. But such a quick release, and that's better from Notre Dame because connecting a few passes, then looking to go direct. I still think there's chances, and we heard Nate Norman at the beginning of this half you know, talk about the threats that they do have in those wide areas. So if that ball can go wide, then you allow for those runs to develop inside the 18-yard box instead of just relying on Ingle takes it well, but then a shot from distance. Get the versatility of your runs, a variety of runs inside the 18-yard box from the service from the wide areas because you've moved it around, you've moved Boston College around defensively. Fisher won it, got it to Matriano. Irish feeling a little bit out of sync as they are getting into that attacking third. Fisher all the way back to Kasica. The freshman goalkeeper has split time this year with Atlee Olafsson. Had a shutout streak of her own of over 167 minutes, snapped, and then conceded two goals in just about a minute in the first half. Richards leading ball picked up by Notre Dame. Restovich looking for Angle. 
Oh, and I like that idea because Restovich is just sitting right behind those midfielders of Boston College. So she's able to get faced up and play that, pa that pass into Izzy Engel. There's Restovich, one of the assist leaders in the country. Looked to be tripped up, but no whistle on the play. It'll be a goal kick. And, and just to finish that previous point, is we're going to see that last play. But Restovich, good turn, gets herself in a good position. And then looks like she's a little bit tripped up, but the ball had gotten away from her already. But she's picking up some really important positions to be able to play that final pass, whether it's into Joseph or Engel. It's just about diversifying those runs in that final third to open up space and, and really pull out Boston College defensively because they've done such a good job communicating to center backs of Dre and Quarter in particular. Richards, senior for the Eagles. Sapienza. Catches out wide. Ball still there, now cleared away as Streisick was making her way toward the goal. The transfer from Alabama in her second year with Boston College. And Nate Norman has been frustrated at times in this match and given the fourth official an earful right now. Corner kick though is what's happening at the moment. Boston College had four of those in the first half. That's their first of the second. Follow up shot is batted away. Kasica had to be on her toes. Good shot and strike from distance. The threat not over yet. Now, Notre Dame builds the other direction. That's a good ball. The rest of it's Troy. Touch forward, Joseph. But that's better from Notre Dame because then it allows for Roy to be able to get higher up the field. Then the runs can develop off, off of that. Here's a previous attempt. That looks like it's headed to the far corner. Kasika does such a good job, keeps her feet moving. She sees it, so she's able to move her feet. Then at last second, get the push off, extends her arm, pushes that away, making sure that doesn't find the back of the net. Roy on the corner on the other end for Notre Dame. Abby Mills, freshman starting on the back line, takes the throw, trying to ignite something in this attack for the Irish. Boston College has had it covered for the most part tonight. One Aaron back pass is what's kept them from keeping the shutout thus far. That and some good saves from their goalkeeper. Don't want to forget about that. Nine saves on the night already for Villabrand. Angle. Roy. Creates a little space, gets her shot off, doesn't miss by much. Well, I actually thought she was going to try to bend that to the far post and said, come back across, across her body, cuts it to the near post, but this is great work. And this is why they switch her to that left-hand side because she can cut it inside, draw defenders, use the defenders as shields. That's why I thought, I thought she was gonna to try to float it to the far post that comes back, just slices through it just a bit and pulls it to just wide of the near post. Right idea and much better play from Roy to be involved in the attack this half. Joseph, so confident on the ball for the first year player, a little slip for the defense. Joseph still working her magic and earning a corner for her team. Well, this is what you want. Your strikers, forwards, hacking players, getting involved. This little hesitation moves and then draws another corner kick. And this is where Notre Dame can take advantage of. Set pieces, get a little separation from your defender, get the run up momentum. 
They'll play this one short, bit of a different look. Restovic, edge of the area now, as her attempt blocked. Smothering defense by Boston College. Well, that's a mistaken touch right there, one that Bella Douglas would like back. That ball was sailing out of bounds. Instead, she keeps it in, but it could work out. She found number nine, Sagala. Sprints to the other end for Boston College and then wanted that cross. Ashley Roberts, number 15, just came into the match for Georgina Clark. Now listen, Notre Dame and Nate Norman, the head coach, not happy with some of these late tackles. What he thinks of as little fouls, but here's Sagala and the handballs, and rightfully so, but Sagala, and I love this at the end here. She gets her head up, looking, assesses the situation. There's a lot of numbers on that near post, so she looks to float it to the far post, where it's a, a 1v1 situation. Just a bit heavy in the end, but it's the right decision from Sagala and what a difference she's made. Always an outlet, always a willing runner to try to get in behind, create chances, and absolutely frustration on the part of Notre Dame and their coaching staff. Well, as you mentioned before, we are just above the where the coaches are standing for Notre Dame, and what Nate Norman was frustrated about was he feels there was a missed handball that needed to be reviewed. And with the replay review rules that are in place this year in college soccer, that is something you can go back and review if it is a potential penalty kick situation. So that's what he was so frustrated about. Corner kick, Notre Dame already three now in this second half for the Irish. Can they take advantage? Fisher got to it first. Cod is knocked down and possession going the other way. And here's a, a last contact right there. It's Cod just knows she needs to body up, but no intent to play the ball. And Listen, we made this point in the first half, Jim. We knew this was going to be a physical game, a direct game with the, the styles of play for both of these. And Boston College in particular knew that they were going to have to come out, work hard, win the first tackles. There's been a few things. It really started from that Lily Joseph play in the first half. It didn't call a foul. It's a clear foul on top of the 18-yard box that started some of these back and forth with the Notre Dame coaching staff. And rightfully so, because there's been some fouls that have gone uncalled that could change the short, could change the course of this game, starting with a non-Joseph foul called we mentioned in the first half. Meanwhile, though, you have to kind of think if you're Boston College, you say, "All right, you go ahead and be frustrated," because they like the position they're in at the moment. Not that they're feeling super comfortable, but they are confident as they should be. Sporting their new jerseys that have their numbers down, or excuse me, their name down below the numbers. That's a first, and I for one appreciate that. No ponytails blocking the names. It's a little easier for us. Will this new look prove advantageous for the Eagles? Engel has been held in check so far. Can it continue though? She has been tough to stop all season long in this her first year in college soccer. Seven games, 10 goals for Angle coming into tonight. Alyssa Jen, the biggest difference, and we did hear Nate Norman reference this at halftime as well, is there's gonna be a tough challenge. It's gonna lead to this set piece for Boston College right there. It's just a, a late challenge from Cod. But the biggest difference is there's always coverage. They got three, four, five players back for Boston College. It's making it so difficult for Joseph, Engel, 
there's always coverage defensively. That's been the game plan. And as I mentioned, Nate Norma was saying, at times, they're leaving themselves exposed. Only 3v3 th backs. It's at times 3v3 situation for them defensively. Streisick on the set piece, still alive. Back to Costello. Volleyball coming your way September 18th. Mark your calendars for our next ACC Network women's volleyball match. An in-state rivalry and two highly ranked teams. Pitt number one, Penn State number three. They moved that to the Peterson Event Center to accommodate the sellout of 12,000 plus expected for that one. Our coverage will begin September 18th at 7 Eastern. Good ball forward from Gemma. Restovich. Osbeck. Her left footed ball. Feared away. Sagal has been excellent. She is doing such a good job of always being an outlet collecting the ball, whether it's back to goal, whether it's in behind, defensively at times, doing what she needs to do just to get a, a little toe poke in to dispossess Notre Dame. But mainly, she's just a constant threat that Notre Dame's always having to be aware of. Especially when that ball is turned over, immediately they look to get in behind in transition. And it's caused Notre Dame some issues because they do like to send players forward. They will leave themselves vulnerable you were just mentioning of the three center backs, but at times they can get caught 3v3. Sagala getting a bit of a rest. You are allowed a re entry in college soccer. So a trio of subs coming on. Lung, who has the brace already, the grad transfer from Harvard, Peltier, and Lowenberg, the three subs for Boston College. Another corner coming. We've seen quite a few of these on both sides. Or so for Notre Dame. This will be the fourth of the second half. Sixth of the match for the Irish. Morgan Roy. Freshman selection a year ago for Notre Dame. Drives it across. That goes out on the other side, and so Notre Dame will try it again from the far flag. Charlie Codd, sophomore for Notre Dame. Her mom, Charmaine Hooper, in the Canadian Soccer Hall of Fame, four-time Canadian Player of the Year. Both parents actually played at NC State. Her dad, Chuck, also soccer player, so plenty of soccer in the veins for Charlie Codd as here comes a corner from the far side. Time for Matriano. Can take it herself. Instead, she's looking to set somebody up, but may have done better there, Lori, to just call her own number. Well, she has the capability to, to strike from that distance as well. And I think this is the player that we've referenced several times, this connector. The one that we know is going to dictate the tempo, slow it down when necessary, speed it up. She's done that. Much more involved, higher up the field this second half. Good shot. My goodness, that happened quickly. Boy, just creating <laughs> off the dribble. Well, she's been on the left side. She's been on the right side. On the left side and the right side again. Here she is on the right side. And again, that is a wonderful, just a little faint with the outside of her foot. Takes the defenders one way. She goes the other. Trying to keep that one on frame. But Matriano in that previous attempt too, why not go yourself? Really done a good job of keeping the ball moving. Deserve that opportunity instead of trying to play it off. Todd will pick it up. And Boston College back on top of it. Bella Douglas, number eight. 
And the work on the far side for the Eagles. Saw an opening. Costello steps into it. There's space to be had for the Eagles. This ball is put behind Peltier. Angle. Nate Norman wondering, would his team be able to adapt in games? Could they figure out, Lori, what was being given them, what was coming at them, the way teams were going to play them defensively? It's been a challenge tonight with what this BC team has done. Well, I think that's what BC needs to give themselves more credit for. That ball was just floated in. Really, no one runs are already in, standing still in the end. But they have to give themselves more credit because they cover a ton of ground. They're combative at times when necessary. They put in the shift in the attack, but also defensively. And they've covered the ground in terms of stalling any sort of attack, not allowing Engel, Joseph, really to get involved in this game in a dangerous way. But then immediately they can attack with numbers as well. So they have both of those sides of the game. And I'm not so sure they've given themselves enough credit coming into this game. Yes, it's a journey. They want to continue to get better. They've already doubled the, the amount of games that they won from last year. So promising future. Look at this freshman stride past the defense. Lily Joseph talked about promising. That too for Notre Dame. Here's our week three ACC Network football lineup starting Saturday at noon with NC State hosting Louisiana Tech. Then it is number 10, Miami hosting Ball State. And finally, Maryland and Virginia coming your way at eight. You can go to Where to Watch on the ESPN app and ESPN.com, which is the ultimate viewing guide to live sports. Georgie Clark back in for Sapienza. Andy Barth in as well for Boston College. Ella Richards getting a break. And Ellie Hodson who came in and scored the goal for Notre Dame back on the field. She was able to take advantage of a pass that went awry from the Eagles and Hodson hopping on it in the 37th minute. That was two minutes after Boston College struck twice. There is Hodson, fighting her way onto the ball. Hodson turning the oh. corner, had everything <laughs> but the finish. <laughs> well, immediately making an impact. Love her center of gravity, it's low to the ground, able to ride challenges. Looking to get in behind. Here's where she rides the challenge, just keeps it close to her, draws the attention, and then sees a little gap, so continues to go, so why not? You see, just at the last second, a little bit off balance, slices through it, sends it away from goal. I love that from Hodson immediately making an impact. And listen, most of this half has been all Notre Dame. Just that last split second where they needed the composure more than they've had. Still plenty of time, but they've made Boston College work a lot in this second half defensively, and they've held strong. They've been up to the challenge, Boston College. This takes a deflection. That could be dangerous. It's already a ball that's a little bit dicey if you're a team playing it back across the center of the field. The deflection doesn't help, but Notre Dame at least immediately not able to take advantage. Well, when you're talking to about assessing the situation, what's the team giving you? And if Seagal is not on the field, and we actually did just see one of the Notre Dame backs step forward, but why not take a few more risks, send another player forward into the attack, got one forward up that's not necessarily gonna give you as big of a threat as Sagala is in behind. A little too much physicality that time from Hodson. Just going back to that previous point too, Jen, about Boston College is, you know, when we talked to Nate Norman about assessing what are teams giving you, being able to read, understand that in real time. The point is, is that Boston College has done a really good job in all areas. They haven't really given Notre Dame a ton of opportunities in many places on this field. They've taken away the threat in behind. At times they've condensed the field, so haven't allowed them to find a ton of space to just be able to control at the tempo that they'd want to if they're gonna try to slow it down. That's credit to the work that Boston College has put in tonight. Well, there's some work right there. Just that ball maybe could have rolled over for what would have been a corner kick, but 
Excellent hustle defensively to make sure that doesn't happen. Still though, Osbeck and the Irish looking for the equalizer. Restovich comes away with it, has her shot blocked. Joseph was ready and waiting, but so too was Boston College. This team has been so good in their moments of transition to where Notre Dame coach Nate Norman said his team had to be better. And they knew that coming in. Big ball up over the top, bouncing, demanding a clearance. And Notre Dame staying calm under the pressure. Lori, I'm curious where you think, as you talked about how well Boston College has done to really clog up all the space. Let's see what the Irish can do with here as it bounces toward Hodson. And again, it's covered. Where do you think Notre Dame has their best shot of finding that advantage in well, the attack? It, yeah, in the wide areas and, and then diversifying not only their runs, so that can initiate what ball is being played, but then also the delivery from those wide areas. Crowd starting to make some noise, looking for a little insurance. It couldn't hurt. It feels a bit like that momentum has swung in the second half. Notre Dame playing with a lot of fight, if you'll pardon the pun. But the Irish still trailing by a goal. Out shooting Boston College 20 to seven on the night. Eight of those shots going on target. Hodson, big collision there as Quarter came flying in defensively. Now makes the slide tackle. Brave play in the back. Oh, and I like this from Hodson because she's always uh, trying to get on the end, keeping those center backs for Boston College active. But this goes back to my previous point. A lot of those direct balls are what Boston College is winning. They want those balls to be played because they're up for the tackles. They're up for the challenge. They want to make and try to win the first and second balls. That's their game. So if Notre Dame can then find other options, which is in the wide areas, but it requires them to hold on to the ball for another pass or two, find the wide areas, then you can get the service in, whether it's a cutback ball floated to the back post, that's much more difficult to defend if you're at Boston College because you have to stay with your mark. You have to figure out where the ball is being delivered. Just haven't seen that enough from Notre Dame tonight. Sigala, guess who's back? <laughs> Doesn't take you long to recognize her presence. And Ingle also back on the other end for Notre Dame. And that's what you can see in college soccer, a little bit of rest and now a push as we head toward the final 15 minutes of the match. Streisick back on, replacing Barth for Boston College. Berkeley Mensick has also come on for Notre Dame. Player number 18 who missed all of last season after undergoing a double knee surgery. Engel. Boston College might prefer her out wide, further away from the goal. Trying to create from that position. Pod. Time. Roy steps onto it. Got her shot off. These are always opportunities. All those players in the box, you have to be careful. Could be handballs, could be missed clearances. Notre Dame continuing to create. Angle kept quiet so far. Number two scorer in the country, but a brace from Ava Long off the bench for Boston College. Her two goals, her first two ever for Boston College, less than a minute apart. One goal back for Notre Dame from Ellie Hodson a couple of minutes later, and here we stand, 2-1 still the score. Under 15 to play in this ACC opener for both teams. Jen Hildreth, Lori Lindsay, glad to have you along for the ride tonight. Joseph off the field at the moment for Notre Dame. Hodson's been playing well since she came into the match. Nate Norman may yet opt to shuffle the deck. Large roster at his disposal. Reminder, not as large as it will be later on. Here comes Joseph back in. 
Three players away for Notre Dame at the U-20 World Cup, one for Boston College. That tournament going right through the end of September. Streisick in possession for Boston College. Costello. Maybe a trip in the corner as Streisick goes down. Player with College Cup experience in her two years at Alabama, going to College Soccer's Final Four in 2022. What kind of a statement will these teams make on night one of the ACC conference season? So far, it's been a big one for Boston College. Can they hang on? Eagles have only beaten Notre Dame once all time. The Irish with 16 wins, a draw, and one loss that you see there. It came in 2003, over 20 years ago, and these two teams competed in the Big East. Mensik, just a bit out of reach for Restovich. Ospek will come back on, replacing Mensik. Quick run there for Mensik. And what a night, too, for Villebrandt. Your saves don't always have to be of the spectacular variety. Sometimes you just have to get the job done. That's most of what she has done tonight, but she's done it a lot. Seven saves on the night for the BC keeper. Streisick couldn't keep control. Pressure on the back of Engel. That's how you can break it. Play back, Ospec now using the width as you talked about earlier, Lori, for Notre Dame. Angle, very little room to work, still gets it away. Ospec will take another corner. Notre Dame, this will be their ninth corner kick of the match. Six of those coming in the second half. Restovich, working away around, but Costello having none of it. Richards. Sagala. Streisick. Angle had the turn, but the ball and the first touch a little too strong after that turn. Now watch out, here she comes, ready to pick the back pocket of Lowenberg. Well, and that's what Boston College, case in point right there, have done so well because as soon as Engel drops to try to collect the ball to her feet. They've got somebody stepping in to the midfield with her to deny her time and space, and then they just funnel narrowly behind that defender. Cod got the shot off quickly. Notre Dame not done yet. 
Tomorrow's ACC PM with Mark Packer will come to you from Charlottesville, Virginia. Starts at 4 p.m. Eastern. will get you ready for Virginia hosting Maryland that game on Saturday right here on ACCN at 8 p.m. Eastern. Ava Lung back in replacing Richards in the attack for Boston College. Can she find a hat trick possibly tonight? You have to think though, the message for Boston College at this point, stay strong, hang on. You don't wanna go away from what your game plan has been, but do anything you can to hang on to that advantage. Lori, this would be a big one for Boston College, a program that has been at the basement in ACC women's soccer. There's an opportunity. I think it may have been a handball beforehand on Joseph. That's what the call is. Well, yeah, this would be a, a huge result, result from Boston College, not only just to take this program to, to new heights as of recent. There's the the handball, but it's a floated ball in from the wide areas. And this is what I was saying. It's difficult to defend when balls are floated in, whether it's from the wide areas or the deeper or wide areas, you're having to keep an eye on the player inside the 18-yard box and the delivery. That bailed out there with the handball in the end from Boston College, but makes it so much more difficult. But yes, huge result if you're Boston College because they've talked about confidence, they've talked about winning individual battles. This shows it right there. That's a huge tackle to come in, make the play by Clark. This is a, a player that's played a lot of left back position. They moved her into the midfield today because tonight they cover a lot of ground. Also, you want to start off ACC conference play with a boost, with momentum. That starts by getting a result and then riding that wave throughout because we know how difficult and how challenging fine margins there are in this conference. Final push perhaps in terms of substitutions as you've seen some of the starters coming back on for both teams. Douglas gets it forward and across goes Streisick. Boston College did not win a single conference game a year ago. Now perhaps with the opportunity on their red bandana night to start this season 1-0 and to do it by taking down a ranked opponent. But does this Notre Dame team, which has reeled off six straight wins, still have something to say? Have to avoid giveaways like that. Peltier doesn't play for the Irish anymore. She did for four years. Now with Boston College. Ava Lung, veteran player, knows well what to do with the ball. Grad transfer from Harvard, where she was a captain for her last two years. Plenty of NCAA tournament experience with her Harvard team. It's a concerning sight for sure. Osbeck is down for Notre Dame. Here is Osbeck coming in to try to help on the play. A little worse for the wear because of it. It looks like she should just be cramping in that right calf right now, potentially. But I think those are gonna be the disappointing moments for Nate Norman that he'll, he knows his team has to correct as they continue to go through conference play. It's just easy giveaways. Giveaways that have led to Boston College being able to, to go quickly into the attack unforced errors and in or at times when typically this is a Notre Dame team that would either be able to keep possession or go directly to go themselves just haven't really been able to execute had a lot of opportunities just nothing that's really tested Villebrant tonight For the most part, and 
That's a dangerous kick high up in the air. It results in the free kick here. The, the space just hasn't been there. We've talked about it tonight. And when we watch some of Notre Dame's earlier games coming into this one, they just, they make teams pay for the spaces that are left, whether it's behind the back line or the space in front of them. Boston College just hasn't given any up tonight. Not consistently anyway. Just over five minutes to go. Peltier, you can hear teammates telling her where to go. Trying to fend off a couple of Notre Dame defenders in the corner. She can't do it. The Irish win the ball back. Angle coming deep to collect. Well, and that's why right now Notre Dame's going to have to keep the ball or really look for the best options because Boston College already was still, the first time they went to the corner flag, six plus minutes, so still quite a bit of time. Player goes down and a penalty kick has been awarded to the Irish. Restovich laid out on the ground. Penalty was the call on the field. There is the opportunity to review this with video review. See what you think. Well, where did this ball come from? From the wide areas, forcing the challenges. It, it, and you know, this is a tough one because I think anywhere else on the field, you are calling this a foul. If it's in the midfield, you're calling that a foul. So rightfully so, then it would be called a foul inside the 18 yard box. But with the physicality of this game, how this game has gone and been refereed, I'm actually surprised that this has been, the whistle has been blown. Well, it is, it is being looked at now. Our referee coming over to take a look and there are new rules, as I mentioned, with college soccer this year in video review. There is expanded video review. All potential penalty kick situations can be looked at. So there is no VAR. There is no video assistant referee like you see in the international game, like you see in pro leagues. But our referee can say, hey, I'm going to choose to go over and take a look at this play. That's what's happening here. There I mean, certainly is contact. Yeah, there's certainly contact. Both players trying to go for the ball. It's loose, and then it's Douglas, though, that goes through Resovich. I actually can see this, this still being called a penalty kick in the end. Well, and remember that it's important to know what was called on the field. It was called a penalty kick on the field as you take at the list, a look at the list now of what can be reviewed. The referee would have to see enough that he was clearly wrong in his initial call to overturn this. Uh, actually, this is going to be interesting because that's a better angle and you, you see the ball actually hit Restovich's arm. I think actually now we're seeing it from that angle that it's going to be called a, a handball and not given as a penalty kick. Well, uh, and that is going to just cause an explosion as you're seeing on the Notre Dame sideline. But yeah, I mean, you called it right there, Lori. Yeah, and as upsetting as it's going to be for Notre Dame and their coaching staff, uh, as we've seen them throughout the majority of this game, it is the right call because that ball is floated in right here. Restovich, her arm makes herself bigger. It then affects the play. Then the late challenge right. with Douglas. And, and that's very important to note the order that that happens because the, the handball would negate the penalty anyway. So even if a penalty kick was thought to have been called on that defensive play, the handball takes it away. Now, I, I think what Nate Norman may be so frustrated with here, this is a difference in college soccer and video review. You are only yeah. allowed yeah. to review the foul that was called in the penalty kick situation. 
anything that happens in the attacking phase of play up to that technically should not be reviewed. I think that's what Nate Norman is saying. Now, those happened almost on the same play, which is why I thought initially that that could be looked at, but that is a difference than what you see in, in the professional leagues. I mean, he's actually saying he wants to pull his team off the field. He's so upset with the way that this is being officiated. That, that's going to be an important point of distinction. I'd be curious to get some clarification from the NCAA on just that. Now, this shows you what can be reviewed and not. So it's not entirely clear there, but when I spoke with a referee earlier this year, he told me this is a major difference you need to know about in the college game versus the pro game. Something that leads up into the, the foul or the handball can be brought back and looked at when you have VAR. That is not the case in the college game. Well, there's going to be a lot to discuss, certainly after this one is over. Angle. Puts it in front of the goal. Notre Dame hoping to make it all a moot point. They can find an equalizer anyway. Pals. Out for another corner, under four minutes to play. Eighth corner of the second half for Notre Dame. Tenth of the match. Well, regardless of the situation right now, and rightfully so, how heated this Notre Dame team is, Still trying to put pressure on Boston College. Still trying to find that tying goal in the run of play. Here comes the corner. The Irish looking for a chance to tie. Out shooting Boston College 23 to 8 tonight. The referee will help play after that ball, obviously knocking into Matriano from short distance. Looks like another card is coming. That's the second yellow shown to the assistant coach for Notre Dame. Martin Rennie is now gonna have to leave the sideline. It's been that kind of night for the Irish. They've been frustrated with the officiating all night long. Fair or not, they have felt like it's been not. The question here is, what happens with this ball? Notre Dame was clearly in possession when the whistle was blown to check on Matriano. She has to come off because it was a situation where it hit her head. So she is ready to come back on, but has to be waved on by the referee. And now Notre Dame will get the ball. Not without a little bit of opposition from Sagala. Matriano back in, over to Pals. Pals the cross, the header! Goal! Notre Dame finds it! All the shots, all the effort, and it is Hudson with the brace to tie it up. Well, it's a huge goal from Hudson. Every time she's been involved, 
She's been an impact player, but here's the wide area. This is what we've been saying the entire game, Jen, especially in this second half for Notre Dame. Try to pull out this defense defensively for Boston College. They do that. No one picks up Hodson. She finds tons of space, but what a delivery that is. Whipped in with pace, a little bit of bend. She meets it perfectly, just tucks it in. And throughout all of the controversy, one thing that hasn't changed is Notre Dame has gotten back to business, continue to apply pressure. That is a deserved goal. They felt like they were hard done by on that review. On the penalty kick, that was a handball prior, but that couldn't be reviewed regardless. They've gotten the job done, tied this game, and now with some momentum, see if they can continue to push the pace and look to see if they can get the go-ahead goal. The yellow card shown there, the Sapienza, I believe. Boston College player getting shown yellow. But really, it's one of the first times that we've seen this Notre Dame all second half be decisive with finding the wide areas, delivering balls in. And, and what did we say? It's difficult because you're having to figure out the trajectory of the service, but you're also having to understand where players, making sure that you're tight with your marks. No one picks up Hodson. It was an excellent finish. Header off the cross. She meets it perfectly. What a tying goal that is. And even though Nate Norman and his coaching staff have been infuriated throughout most of this game. The team has kept their cool. They've continued to, to find moments when to put Boston College under pressure and really good response. On the 25th shot of the match, Notre Dame connected for their second goal. Hodson, two goals in this game. Three now in her two games played after ACL injury, kept her off the field all of last year. Incredible start to her Notre Dame career in just these last two matches. And this one not over yet. Powell's came on when Ospec went off and she's been influential. Rest of it, Notre Dame wanting more and it is too high on the header from Joseph. This is what tied it in uh, the 88th. Yes, Powell's, what a delivery because no one closes her down. She'd get her head up, but then through traffic, you see all the Boston College defenders, they're in the right place, but no one is getting tight to their defender or locking in on a, an attacker. That's the number one rule inside the 18 yard box. Just grab onto somebody, don't allow them to get a free header. Well, Hudson finds that space, makes them pay. And rightfully so, this entire second half has been all in the momentum of Notre Dame. They just haven't taken their chances, whether it's been Rushed opportunities. Engel has a chance now. Puts it wide. Rush opportunities, just uh, forcing it down the middle of the field where Boston College has had most of their, their defenders, but great response. At least a, a deserved tie out of this game for Notre Dame. Welcome to conference <laughs> play, everyone. 2-2, the final in a hard fought battle tonight. Still a ton of credit goes to Boston College for what they did on this field.